In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare our hearts for the celebration of this Mass by reminding ourselves of the forgiveness we receive through the waters of baptism and our need of God's healing and mercy. God our Father, thy gift of water brings life and freshness to the earth. In baptism it is a sign of the washing away of our sins and the gift of life eternal. Sanctify this water, we pray. Renew the living spring of thy life within us, that we may be free from sin and filled with thy saving health, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech thee, absolve thy people from their offences, that through thy bountiful goodness we may all be delivered from the bands of those sins by which our frailty we have committed. 
Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our blessed Lord and Saviour, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. You are dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were, by nature, children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. 
by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This is the word of the Lord. said to Nicodemus, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to (coughs) condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise
Will you please be seated? Just two or three brief notices before the homily. Uh, the first is to say uh, that there is going to be a splendid champagne reception after this Mass uh, to help us celebrate Lightari Sunday, the Sunday of rejoicing, when we're encouraged to lessen our Lenten disciplines a little and to rejoice in the Lord's love uh, for us. And the champagne has very kindly been contributed today by Simon Laney. I'd like to say a huge thank you to him particularly also for sponsoring the music today. I want to let you into an official state secret that I've only just discovered, and that is that it is Father Julian's birthday today. Um, and so over a glass of champagne, everything has fortuitously come together, we'll be able to wish him a happy birthday. So the champagne will be served in church because it's a bit wet outside. Do please stay, don't run off, have a lovely drink with us. That was a very All Saints Margaret Street round of applause, if I may say so. Um, second uh, brief notice to say an enormous thank you. I am confounded with joy and gratitude at the amount of money that has flooded into our parish office this week as part of our music sponsorship appeal. Um, this week only we've received a further six thousand pounds. It is really extraordinary. It represents immense kindness and generosity on the part of those who have given. Uh, it's a wide range of different sums given in different ways by different people in different places and I'm hugely, hugely grateful. There are still a few slots left. Um, there are still a few slots left to cover the music on the 14th of April and I will be standing by my stall as I was last week to see if we can fill those slots at £100 and £50 each. And I think, essentially, once we've filled those slots, uh, we are very, very close indeed to having achieved our goal in nearly a fortnight. I thought this thing would roll on for months and we'd all be sick and, and tired of it, but we've, a, we've achieved this goal in a fortnight. It's really good news, so thank you, everybody. Third brief notice, Walsingham. I said last week there were only six people who had signed up for Walsingham. There are now 14 people signed up, so that's really excellent. We have 20 spaces on our weekend pilgrimage to Walsingham in July. Our Lady of Walsingham appeared again to me in a dream last night. She said, I'm very pleased to hear, she said, I'm very pleased to hear that uh, 14 places have been filled. She said, 14 is great, but 20 would be better. So if there are six people who would like to join us on our pilgrimage to Walsingham, please just get in touch with our parish office. Words from our Gospel reading just now. Just as Moses, was lift, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I've had nothing but sleepless nights since I heard the news that the beautiful label on Tate and Lyle's golden syrup is going to be changed. It is the oldest British product label in continual use, but it contains a rather curious and slightly unsettling image if you look closely at the tin, the carcass of a dead lion surrounded by flies. Or rather, that's what it looks like. They're actually bees. They plan on getting rid of this strange image and replacing it with a sort of smiley face that looks a bit like Winnie the Pooh gone wrong. <laughs> but that strange picture of a dead lion evokes the story from the Old Testament in which a bee colony makes its home in the rotting carcass of a lion killed by Samson. When the honeycomb is removed, it becomes the answer to a riddle set by Samson for some guests at a wedding. The riddle is this. Out of the eater came something to eat, and out of the strong came something sweet, which is also on the syrup tin label. But the reason that rotting lion carcass has caused such a hullabaloo is this. 
It's a really good example of something in Christian theology referred to as typology. A type, a type is an image or a person or a story in the Old Testament that mystically prefigures or foreshadows the story of Jesus Christ. So the sweet honey coming from the dead lion was seen in the early church as a foreshadowing of our salvation in Christ. Samson stood for Christ, who defeats Satan like a roaring lion and allows us to benefit from the sweet result of that strife, the honey of eternal life. Now this way of reading the scriptures, of hearing mystical echoes and seeing subtle foreshadowings in the story of our salvation is actually very old. It's also very venerable. It was a fascinating and frequent tactic of preachers in the patristic period in the medieval age. But the blind, desiccated imagination of the Protestant reformers, however, couldn't cope with it. They saw this way of reading the scriptures as too fanciful, too easily prone to abuse and make-belief, and they frequently sought to do away with it. And yet, we discover this morning in our readings that this way of interpreting the Hebrew Scriptures actually starts with Jesus Christ himself. To condemn typology is to condemn Jesus' own reading of the Scriptures. In our Gospel reading, Jesus makes it clear that story from the Old Testament involving poisonous serpents that we heard in our first reading actually refers to himself. It helps explain what will happen to him. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, he tells us, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. His death on the cross will be like that bronze serpent. Those who look to it and trust in it will be saved from the power of Satan, the great serpent. Now, quite frankly, this story should be deeply incised on the imagination of any person who worships in this church. All Saints Margaret Street contains the most magnificent monumental depiction of it in London, in my view. It forms part of that enormous triptych of images that covers our west wall there at the back of the church. That triptych of images was put into All Saints a little while after its construction in 1888 as a memorial to our second vicar, Birdmore Compton. He was so beloved by the parish that they didn't wait until he was dead to erect the memorial. <laughs> it was put in whilst he was still alive. And so touched was he at this remarkable gift that he wrote a little tract about that frieze, explaining its theology. If you read that little tract, you realise the whole triptych there on our west wall, the whole triptych of images, only makes sense if you read it typologically, in the way I've been describing. Seeing those scenes from the Old Testament as pointing forward to our salvation in Christ, in the centre up there, we see the story of the bronze serpent, which Birdmore Compton presents as an allegory of the fallenness of humanity. The serpent's poison represents our being subject to sin and death. The bronze serpent raised up is Christ, mystically present in the story, 
and our only hope for salvation from enslavement to sin. But if you have a look at that frieze, you'll notice the image of the brazen serpent is presented between images of the sacrifice of Isaac and the offering of Melchizedek. Abraham and Isaac, Father Compton asserts, is a mystical representation of the resurrection. Isaac, if you think about it, appears in that narrative condemned to death at the hand of his father, yet springs to life at the angel's reprieve. Father Compton tells us, we behold here the mystery of regeneration, the great mystery that man can die and be reborn anew, that man may and will thus become partaker in Christ's death and Christ's life. And that leads Father Compton to his final point about that magnificent frieze, the third image of Melchizedek offering bread and wine. For in that picture, we see an echo of the Eucharist. It's in the Mass that the mystery of the cross and the reality of personal regeneration in Christ that we see in the other images is nourished and strengthened and made real. Putting that last piece of the jigsaw in its place, we see in our magnificent frieze a series of Old Testament images become something that we experience in the here and now. Our hope of salvation expressed in the earliest narratives of ancient Israel, yet recapitulated, repeated, reconfirmed in the life of Christ and reborn, relived and re-inhabited in the life of each and every Christian who comes to the altar at the other end of the building. For we find there at that altar, in bread and wine, the body and blood of the one who, like Moses' serpent, was raised high, that whoever believes in him might have eternal life. Amen.
Trusting in the Father's great love for us, let us turn to him with our prayers. Let us pray for the peace and unity of God's church on earth, that with joyfulness and sincerity she might continue to make known to the world the good news of its salvation. We pray for Jonathan, our bishop, for Sarah, Bishop of London, and for all who minister to the holy people of God. We pray especially for those preparing for the sacraments of baptism and confirmation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for strength in our own Lenten disciplines and for joyful hearts as even amidst our trials we draw close to the Lord. We pray for this place and for all who contribute to our ministry here. And we pray for the friends of All Saints Margaret Street, and especially today for Stephen Baldwin, Stephen Barber, William Benfield, Adrian Berry, Charlotte Black, Graham Bloom, and Colin Bodkin. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for an end to war among nations, for the peoples of Ukraine, Gaza and Israel, Haiti and the Sudan, and all those across the world whose oppression and persecution go unreported. We pray for them too. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Charles, our King, and for the good of our own nation, that we might be governed with justice and compassion, and that we might be mindful of and give thanks for the many liberties many of us enjoy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those in need, for the bereaved, the hungry, and displaced, for prisoners, the homeless, and those in the grip of addictions. And we pray for the sick in body, mind, or spirit, and especially for Martin Burker, David Craig, Roger Dilks, Father Harry Hodgetts, Leslie Lee, Wendy Leach, Elizabeth Lyon, Frank Otwell, James Roger, Bruce Ross Smith, Francis O'Gorman, and Jacqueline Wesley. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. We pray for the faithful departed, for those who have died recently, including Marion Duggan, Doreen Harding, Doris Sanders, and James Ford. And for those whose anniversaries of death fall today, including Margaret Booker, Diana Juniper, and Caroline Farrer. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. On this day we pray and give thanks for all those who embrace motherhood, for our own mothers, and giving thanks for the maternal instincts which hold families together. And let us ask for a share in the prayers of heaven and especially for those of Blessed Mary, Mother of God and Mother of us all. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, our Father, your word, Jesus Christ, spoke peace to a sinful world and brought humanity the gift of reconciliation. Enlighten our hearts that in humility and joy we may clearly see the love you have for us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, saith the Lord, there am I in the midst of them. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
pray that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of thy hands for the praise and glory of his name, for the power of the good of all his holy church. We beseech thee, O Lord, mercifully to have respect unto these our oblations that they may be profitable unto us for our increase in all godliness and for the advancement of everlasting salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God, who dost bid thy faithful people who cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by thy word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which thou hast prepared for those who love thee. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we lord and magnify the high glorious name, for more praising thee and saying.
All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who at thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. <coughs> Jesus Christ is Lord, O Saviour of the world, by thy cross and precious blood, hast redeemed us, save us and help us. We humbly beseech thee, O Lord. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of thy dear Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, and to grant that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Baha'i home and with home and in home, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say,
let us pray. Lord God, whose blessed Son, our Saviour, gave his back to the smiters and hid not his face from shame, and give us grace to endure the sufferings of this present time with sure confidence in the glory that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is 
Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought unto the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 